This is a Glendale Library Arts and Culture program created for and featuring teens, edited and hosted by the teen library staff. Hi everyone, it's Melissa and Desiree. Today's guest is a self-taught musician where he became obsessed with the entire process of music and began producing and recording his own songs. He has spent hours studying the art. Some of his inspirations are Lauren Hale and Kanye West. He has continued to develop his craft and expand his skill set by intertwining R&B melodies and vibrant dance rhythms into his sound while staying true to his hip hop roots. Today, he has been using his musical talents and gifts to develop local artists through his production company, One Way Entertainment, and to impact dozens of students both nationally and internationally through music education workshops and programs that he has taught and created as the Senior Education Coordinator for the Recording Academy Grammy Museum. He is on a purposeful path determined to complete his assignment in music. As he will tell you, watch where we go. Grab grab a snack, drink, or your pet, and let's welcome Skylar O'Neill to Teen Gen Talks. (laughs) Thank you, Skylar, for taking the time out of your day to talk with us. We have a lot to discuss. Of course. Thank you for having me. I I appreciate it. I'm excited to be here and, and ready to discuss Discuss whatever's on your mind. I'm happy to talk. <laughs> um, so to start off, um, how about we start from the beginning? You're a self-taught musician, and you became obsessed with the entire process of music. What about music did you fall in love with? Man, you know, I think that music is like, I feel like music has always been there for me, and I just, like, later on in my life just discovered uh, discovered it, you know, it was, it was, it, it, cause I can't tell you, oh yeah, I just woke up one day and, and heard the song <laughs> and I wanted to do music. It's just like, it just seems like it's always been there. And it's like, I feel like music loved me before I loved it or, or before I knew that I loved it. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I knew that I, it was something that was, uh, drawing me towards music and just realizing it was just who I am and, uh, accepting it. And then, that naturally just led me to uh, want to know as much as I can and explore as much as I can a- about music. So yeah, I think just early on, um, yeah, I started actually like I was. My mom would tell you that I was writing songs at like two or three. Like I, I remember <laughs> slight things, uh, <laughs> but I uh, definitely like when I was eleven is when I started to like really like pursue music and make beats and write songs, but. Yeah, I just feel like it was always there and I just had to like discover and accept it. Growing up, who were some of your musical inspirations? My musical inspirations? I mean, I feel like this is such like an easy answer, but it's the honest truth because who didn't want to be Michael Jackson? You know, yeah, right. <laughs> like, like, yeah. who didn't want to be Michael Jackson? You know, so of course it was Michael and it was really like for just like the whole artistry, like the performance and just like the style of music. But um, as I got like more into hip hop and, and things like that, I was like a big fan of, I'm still like a big fan of like Jay-Z and Kanye. And I was a fan of like Ludacris and Nelly, like a lot of the like early 2000s uh, people. So that, that's what I really got into hip hop. But r and B, I I mean, man, just like the whole era of 90s R&B was, was pretty big. Um, so I think like that was, that was an easy foundation for me to have between hip hop R&B and then uh, especially gospel music because that was just naturally what was playing around me like my sister always is playing different R&B stuff from like Genuine to Cisco she actually uh, introduced a lot of my hip hop taste too she was a big 50 cent fan and then I became a big 50 cent fan and, and, and you know um, what was the motivation behind you wanting to actually pursue music um that's a good question because um you know I kind of found myself like just always thinking about it always doing it even when you know like it wasn't it was just more than a hobby when I realized that dang this is just how I actually express myself like I'm not looking to you know because because the the passion for it came out of this is a good way for me to to uh, you know like express myself and uh, you know it was a creative process it was fun to do and it just felt like it felt deeper than a career. It felt more like a purpose. Uh, and I think that once I realized like, okay, man, this is, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. It was more of a divine feeling that led me to, to pursue it. And then realizing that not only can I feel like my needs as, as far as like what, what I need, um, as a person, but I can also help other people, 
um, you know, fulfill, you know, their needs or, you know, whether it's, you know, through something that they hear from me or whether it's as a producer helping, you know, an artist pull out things about them that maybe they couldn't express before. So, yeah, I think like once I realized that it was bigger than just music and it was, you know, attached to, I believe that it was a purpose. I still believe that that's what made me pursue. How did you put yourself out there so that people know that you did music? You know, I, I work at the, uh, you know, for, for the Grammys now with the Grammy Museum. But before here, I had no connection to the music industry at all. So I always thought that, like, if I was going to do music, it was always going to be on an independent level. And I was going to have to do everything myself because I didn't know anybody in uh, the, the industry. So early on, uh, me and my uh, god brother, we used to be like in a rap group together. So I would just like produce for us and then. Uh, like his dad got us on like this little tour around LA so we did that when we were like super young and then um, as I got to high school I started to record like my own like mixtapes I like anytime it was like Christmas or a birthday coming up like only thing I would ask for is like recording equipment so I was so <laughs> it wasn't toys it wasn't games it was all like I need this beat machine I need these speakers so I started to build like my own uh, studio and started to just like record myself in ninth grade, I was going to uh, Long Beach, Jordan on the north side. Um, and I remember I recorded like a four track mixtape. It was at this time, I was just downloading any instrumental that had come and I, I would just rap to it and freestyle to it. I remember I had like my computer and like a computer upstairs, computer downstairs, and I had another CD burner and I was like going up and downstairs burning <laughs> these CDs and all that stuff. So, so I burnt like a hundred CDs and then I was just passing the, the, the mixtapes out at school. And I did that at Jordan. And then when I got to Poly, where I actually graduated from, I did the same thing. I had mixtapes, I, I passed them out. And then I started to, to perform like at rallies. And, and that led to me opening up the door for other students who were interested in performing. Mm -hmm. So since I like figured out, okay, yeah, I can put out a mixtape. I know how to put on a show at the school. So now I, I was interested in like doing that for other people. So I started to like take like, you know, some of like my peers, we would go to my house after school, work on music with them and then go back to school and like perform it at uh, the lunchtime rallies. <laughs> so it really was just like, as far as getting out there, it was just, just really putting on, just trying things, just trying things. And, and I, out of high school, I started to just throw like little concerts uh, around the city. I did a couple in Bellflower, did one in Long Beach, and I would just have different artists that I developed perform in, in these uh, showcases, and I will always perform in them too. So it was really just operating at, you know, production company, just like in my teens. So so that that that's like what I did. Like I made like, you know, mistakes and just, you know, had to learn from them and, and keep going. But that's pretty much what it was. It was just going for it and doing what, you know, I felt like I, I could do on my own until more support came. And you are a self-taught musician, so what helped you become so knowledgeable in your craft? The self-taught part was really just, you know, me experimenting with, you know, learning how to produce. And, you know, as I'm learning how to produce, I'm like, it'd be helpful if I knew a little bit of piano and things like that. So, uh, you know, I, another Christmas came up and I asked for a piano <laughs> or, or something like that. But then I, what really helped me too is I, I took advantage of um, like after school programs. So there was this after school program in Long Beach uh, that was called um, The Lamp. It was a part of an organization called LB Cap, and their team program was The Lamp. And they had a, mu a music department, they had video, they had photography, they had like silk screening and all that stuff. And originally I got in there because of like graphic design, which is weird because I'm not good at graphics at all. <laughs> but um, I went and once I went there for graphics and then found out they had a music department and then just like never turned back. So there I really like found like mentors who took me underneath their, their wing and was really like teaching me like hands on like. Uh, how to develop, you know, m my uh, skill. And then, yeah, that's pretty much that, that. That was a big part of it. Going to the, the, that after school program, literally so much came out of that that I'm like still dealing with uh, like the, the results of it now that are just <laughs> exciting things. I'm like, man, if I never went to the after school program, all this stuff probably wouldn't have happened. <laughs> so, <laughs> I just think that you, you, you've always learned. I'm actually like, I, I, I'm still I play piano now and I'm still like looking for a teacher right now too I just think you just always have to keep uh like learning and just keep growing do you remember the first performance that you did 
so again, I, my, my family, like I said, we, we were, uh, you know, heavy in the church and we used to always perform. Um, I used to, I, I used to dance a lot too. So we used to always like perform like dancing. So I was, I was used to being like in front of people because at church we would dance and all the time. Uh, I'm trying to think the first time I like, I guess like rap that I can remember in front of somebody, it wasn't even like a real rap. It was like this, uh, we we had in sixth grade we had like these little performances i think it was called like chorus or something like that like yeah, that yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah, so they wanted there was this one part i remember everything all, all i was saying was yo yo the lady the whole time right <laughs> it was like <laughs> this thing but i i kind of made it by like i was dancing a lot more back then so i was like performing and i was like dancing this is back when like clown dancing was a thing so i was like dancing and all that stuff <laughs> like that but um that was one of my first i guess performances but the first performance I did with like a song that I actually wrote was actually at the same place where um I did that school performance and me and my god brother at the time we performed a song that I had produced and yeah like I honestly like if it wasn't for performing I would probably just be a producer I just love being on stage though like it's 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 fun <laughs> yeah. um what's your creative process like and how did how do you find inspiration to create yeah I mean it really just depends on the situation so a lot of times if I'm like creating for myself I think my best songs come when I have like the song idea first so it can just be literally like a voice memo of just like a chorus and then I'll just record that idea a cappella, and then build the music around it I, I kind of learned that about myself that I, I work better when I have a song in mind mm -hmm. but if I'm working with an artist I like to sit and have a conversation with them first just to talk to them and just figure out like what's on their mind like a little bit about uh their background if I'm just meeting them what what's in, you know j just so I can create something that's custom for them and, and how they're feeling so they can really give their all to it so uh it depends and you know there's sometimes I may just hear a cool sound or have a cool chord progression and build off of that but yeah it I think those are things that I've, I've learned about myself as far as the creative process. What message do you wish that you you can tell through your music? What message do I wish I could tell through my music? Hmm. You guys are asking some good questions. <laughs> <laughs> what do I want to tell people through my music? You know, I think that everybody has gifts and everybody has their own purpose. And through like the process of my music and through the process of producing for other people, I feel like I have an ability to help people identify what their gifts and their purpose is, whether that's music or whether that's being a dentist or a doctor, whatever it is, you can kind of identify with pursuing a passion that you have. So in my music, I want people to really connect with themselves and, and really connect with their, you know, their gifts, their passions, and to really, you know, go for it, you know, um, and, and there's always an underlining message that's, you know, spiritually led as well, too, because that's my background as well, too. So um, you, you definitely will, will get some of those influences and nuances in uh, the music I, I do as well. But, uh, yeah, I just think identifying with your purpose and, and your gifts and your talents and, uh, and actually pursuing them. It's like the people who listen to, like, my music, I hope that they feel inspired to do that in, no matter what field that they're they're going in how have you seen the music industry change throughout the years well the music industry is completely different now you know it's like mm -hmm. um it's interesting because when I first started in music like I only thought independent I never thought that I would mm -hmm. you know be attached to any major or anything I just always thought okay I just gotta do the grind myself and and you know and I was happy with that and now it seems like that's like more of the norm. It's like you almost have to like come as a already developed package, even if you're trying to get a, a major deal or if you're trying to get, you know, just stay independent, like you still have to kind of establish yourself um, as a brand as and not just an artist, but as a business. And yeah, I think that's always been true, but I think it's even more true now. And with things like, you know, streaming changing the industry, there's ways that you could, be successful in music depending on your own um definition of success and maintain a life you know have income off of it without getting to like let's say like a superstar level like there's a, there's a lot of people i mean 
a million follow, followers is a lot. There's a lot of people with a million followers that I've never heard of before, you know? So I think right. like it's it, <laughs> the fact that there's an infrastructure set up for you to build your following uh, and, you know, have a brand and a network of people that you can cater to, to actually support yourself, I think is like really cool. So I think that is uh, a big difference. And quantity of music is just, uh, it's like a good and a bad thing. It's just like, there, it's like a lot, a lot of music. And sometimes the music is coming out so much that you don't get a chance to really sit with it and appreciate it the way that you should. And it's almost like you have to play the game because if you don't keep putting out music, then you run the risk of people forgetting about you because a project will come out and then two weeks later, you forget that project ever came out. So I think the quality time that music needs to really be appreciated has been a little affected by it but you know there's there's pros and cons with, with it all but I think being able to support yourself in any level that you feel comfortable with pursuing I think is possible now and it's just a matter of uh, whoever's doing it to put the work in treat it as a business how has your music evolved throughout the years of you doing it when I first was into music I would just do any style like like I had background in rapping and then I like went to do pop music I had a project I was working on like a country project at a time I was like <laughs> it was just all over the place and I realized I was good as a producer but not as an artist because as an artist you know if you you can be diverse but you also got to like have some type of foundation for a fan base to say okay I get the direction that you're going and then you know once you're more established you can kind of expand so I think like I've kind of focused in a bit more on like what naturally comes to me and and develop that and at least exploring all of those other genres early on it kind of allowed me to as a producer to be able to work with a, a larger variety of artists that, that I look to develop. You now have your own uh, production company, One Way Entertainment. Can you talk a bit about how that came to be and your goal behind creating One Way Entertainment? Yeah, like literally One Way, I had the idea for One Way for a while, um, but when it really kicked off was in high school with those little rallies. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's really what, when it kicked off. One Way Entertainment really like kicked off at Long Beach Poly, where I had my music club, which was a uh, one-way music club. And I was, you know, developing like artists around the school and performing at, you know, lunchtime rallies. And out of out of high school, I kind of just like kept going with it and took on a few uh, more artists. And just started to develop them, work on myself and put on, you know, these, these um, local uh, concerts. And um, yeah, I mean, the goal for it really was uh, combining visions to reach a common goal. So really what that means is I want people who is a part of one way to feel like, not to feel like they're doing me a favor, but to feel like us working together is helping them pursue what they want to uh, accomplish. It's helping them to accomplish what they're looking to um, be successful in. So that's my goal behind it is to build a, you know, a team of people and it's going through so many different uh, uh, ups and downs. And I think like right now I'm at the place of rebuilding it um, and just like going full, uh, full flesh, full speed ahead with it. So uh, yeah, that, but yeah. What is one piece of advice that you would give to a teen wanting to pursue music? I would say, make sure that you love it because you, you need to have the love for it in order to deal with the disappointments that come with mm -hmm. it. Because, you know, if, if you're able to do this, and this is a cliche thing, but it's so true, but if you, if you feel like you can do this for free and, and if nobody like hears your music and you're just making it for you and you're comfortable with that, then I think that you can pursue it because a lot of people, a lot of times we can mix the business of music with the creativity and feel like, well, since I'm not that good at the business, that must mean I'm not that good at the music when those are two separate things. So mm -hmm. I would say like, if you're starting out right now, one, it's important to identify what your strengths are. So if you are a good, you know, singer, but are maybe not that good at producing, then find somebody who can help you produce. If you're good at producing, but can't write a songs as well, find somebody who can write. And if you're good at the creative process, but are not that good with the marketing and, and the PR and all that stuff, then find somebody who can do that. So, so I think that collaboration is key. It, you know, nobody does it all on their own. You, you, you need a team, you need support. And if it's not a team that's like dedicated to you, you can always outsource, you know, if it maybe somebody's just with you for 
a certain uh, project that, that you have. And the big thing I would say is don't be afraid to invest in yourself as well, too. Like you had said, it is the music business. You have to invest in yourself because you, sp you can spend hours in the studio uh, investing, putting all this time, and then you put it out and you have no plan or no strategy, just hoping that something's going to happen. So I, I think like whatever time you're putting into creating, put just as much or even more time into uh, how you're going to put it out there. So you are the Senior Education Coordinator for the Recording Academy Grammy Museum. How did this opportunity arise? Oh man, you remember that after school program I told you about? Like, uh -huh. like literally, yeah. yeah, that literally started everything. When I went to Poly, I got connected with this, uh, I can't believe, I think it's called like uh, YOP or something like that. And they placed you at different after school programs. So that's where I went to that graphic design program, which led me to LB Cap, the lamp. And the lamp itself had a relationship with the Grammy Museum. So when I got, uh, when I went to the lamp, uh, part of the program was going to the Grammy Museum. And I remember before we went there, one of my mentors, he said this to me, he said, you know, treat everywhere you're going like an audition. I was like, okay, I thought not, not that we're about to like audition for anything, but he was like, you never know who's watching you. So he was like, even if you're just asking questions and all that. So I took what he said and I, when I was there, I was just, you know, trying to be engaged, trying to take on leadership roles, trying to, you know, just be active and, and, and help out however I can. And that caught, you know, the attention of, of the Grammy Museum. And uh, there's a lady by the name of Kate uh, uh, Studer, uh, Nader, uh, her name is now Kate Nader, uh, who was uh, the person who hired me on at the museum. And after I went through the program, I remember she told me, she was like, yeah, you can come intern with us. And the internship never happened. So I just kind of like forgot about the museum. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I was, I did a few things with them. And before I started working, so I was a student performer. So one of the first things I did with them is they had these exhibit openings and they had a James Brown exhibit that they opened. And I was one of the performers who did like a tribute to James Brown and his family was there and then we performed. Uh, and the other, last thing I did with the museum was we did a trip to the White House. Uh, to We got greeted by like Michelle Obama and it was just like, it was like awesome. And after that, it was just like, radio silence I didn't hear anything I was like okay I was like, well, that, those are cool experience but yeah that's how I got started being a student in the program and then later on when the opportunity came up uh, I they hired me on as the education coordinator so you've done workshops and programs do you have a favorite one that you've done it's a workshop that we have uh, called music of the civil rights movement and this is a workshop where I um, will play a song that was based off an event that happened during the uh, civil rights movement of like the 1960s and um, we'll say, here's a song, uh, well, here's an event that happened and here's a song uh, that uh, was written in response to this event. And at the end of the workshop, I have the students write their own lyrics. I walk them through kind of like a songwriting mm -hmm. process about, and I let them choose any topic they want. I, I said, you can choose, you know, you can choose women's rights, you can choose police brutality, you can choose animal rights, you can choose, yeah, I don't know, whatever you want, less homework in school, anything, anything you want, you know? And so hearing the students express like what's important to them um, and writing it out and then getting on stage and reading, you know, what they uh, you know, are, are reading what they want to fight for on, on stage, that is, is like one of my favorite workshops. What is a typical day like for you? Preparing for workshops, looking for different people who can come in and, you know, be guest speakers, trying to connect with different organizations to see if, you know, there are any partnership uh, or collaboration op opportunities, outreach, trying to find different students to be to be a, a part of it. Um, I do interviews as well, too. That's why I'm like really impressed with you guys. Uh, <laughs> interviews as well. so I, I, I interview like different artists and industry professionals, um, you know, teaching workshops and then our, our staff isn't that large, so a lot of times we will help each other with different projects. So, um, you know, I, I, it may be something that I'm helping uh, curatorial uh, services with or something that, you know, I may, I mean, I've, I've done everything from even, you know, this was not even my description, but I even will help out security. Like, oh, you guys need an uh, extra person today. And, you know, and just because that's just the environment of the museum, it's just like wherever, you, you know, we need help at, we just, you know, jump in. I, I, 
I'll go grab a broom and, and sweep and, and, and clean up as well. So it's really, but my, my, my main thing is, is really developing the education uh, programs that happen at the museum and uh, not only at the museum, but also help some of our, um, our partners. Like we have a museum in Mississippi. We have one in New Jersey. We have one in the Caribbean and Anguilla. And I also will help develop uh, their education programs as well and, and, and travel to their locations and, and teach as, as well, too. So, um, yeah, so it can be it can fluctuate. I guess that's the most <laughs> consistent thing that I do. But it, like I said, it, it, it can fluctuate depending on uh, the, the season. Before we end, we have some rapid fire questions. The first question is, what is your favorite color? Because like I like colors for different things. I think, <laughs> so like <laughs> if it's wearing it or if it's just like a mood, but it might sound boring, but I really like gray. I really like the color gray. <laughs> <laughs> what is something you have been proud to say that you have accomplished? I have a two-year-old son, and I feel like that's the greatest thing I ever accomplished. Like, I just like still can't believe that I'm a father. Like, I'm so I'm somebody's dad, which is crazy. So it's like that. That's like by far, by far, the greatest accomplishment. Nothing's close. What is the last album that you bought or downloaded? Well, I guess this is like a shameless plug, um, but there's a, a project that just came out uh, uh, by an artist named Giveon that's called um, When It's All Said and Done. So that just came out and I've been listening to that, to that one. If you could change anything about the music industry, what would you change? I think that I would find a way for people to take more time with appreciating music and uh not just be so quick to go on to the next to actually mm -hmm. like um appreciate it as as art and, and art takes some time to really you know um understand it completely because you listen to a song once you might catch the beat you listen to it again you might catch the lyrics you listen to it again you might catch a melody or and it's like it takes time to dis to dissect all of those things you know to, to really get a full like appreciation of it so i think I don't even know how that would be done, but I think if there was a way to monitor like the <laughs> quantity versus quality, uh, that I, that that's one thing that that I would like to see happen. What does success for you mean right now? Success for me means controlling my peace. It means doing what I love. It also means being able to support my family, support my friends, help other people find their purpose, um, and to be able to, to support myself while doing those things that I love to, to, to do. So that can be um, on an international level, that can be on an independent level, but being able to support myself with the passions that I have and to help other people um, develop their gifts and, and, and their talents. And uh, yeah, just to be, be a resource for people as well. So, and and also to be somebody that uh, people can look to and see the work that I believe that God does through me. So if they can see God through what I'm doing, then I think that is the number one uh, indicator for success. What is a book that you have recently read or currently currently reading that you would recommend? Oh man, okay, look, I got a couple of choices for you, right? So <laughs> uh, you, I talked about talked about God a little bit, right? So this book right here, I got books ready. I've been reading this book, mm -hmm. Battle Path of Flair, Prayer. So this this is really cool, you know, if you are, are spiritual at all, it kind of like walks you through different um, prayer strategies. So mm -hmm. this one is this is really cool. Again, remember I was telling you that uh, we artists can't look at themselves as just artists. They have to look at themselves yeah. as business and you got to learn the business. So mm -hmm. this is a really good book too. Everything you need to know about the music business. And this isn't the latest edition. Um, there's one that just came out, I think like last year or stuff like that, but still a lot of uh, uh, good information in, in this one as well. Thank you so much. We learned so much about you. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to sit down and talk with us. Can you let everyone at home know about any upcoming projects and where they can connect with you? Yes, for sure. And one, thank you guys for, for talking thank with you. me. I mean, this was amazing. Your, the questions was awesome. The vibe was there. Like, yeah, this, 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 this was really cool. I, you, you guys did an excellent job. I, I'm thankful that you reached out. Um, but yes, so um, you can find me, uh, you know, on Instagram or any of the socials at just my name, Skylar O'Neill. That's also my website too, SkylarO'Neill.com. And actually just, uh, I don't know when this is going to release, but just on uh, Friday, October 2nd, 
um, there's a project that released by an artist that I'm working with named Giveon. Uh, and, and it just came out. It's available every, everywhere. And there's a project, a song I produced called Steal Your Best, along with uh, uh, some of my friends, Seven Thomas and uh, Dominic Matthews. So that's out right now. And I'm like really excited. Out it, it was a pretty big deal to, to get that, that placement. So somebody who I worked with and developed and just is, you know, relationships are everything, you know. So that's out just came out actually like as we were doing this interview it just came out you know so, so definitely <laughs> go look at that it, 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 you know anywhere and then you know i'm, I'm working on uh so, some some new music uh you know myself that i haven't announced yet but uh <laughs> you will know when it's coming out if you if you just keep up with me on the on the socials <laughs> awesome thank you so thank much you. this is amazing no thank you. yeah thank you thank you